Hey, welcome to Timberline Church. If this is your first time to join us online, I wanna invite you to text I'm new to the number on the screen. One of our core values is connection. As we go into a time of worship, wherever you are, this time is precious. Psalms 104 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. I am so thankful that we can worship together.
gentle grace when the heart is under fire another way when the walls are closing in and when i look at the space between where i used to be and this reckoning i know i will never be alone there was another Next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for Thank you for participating in worship. It is such a sweet time. Let's pray. Dear God, we are thankful for the time that we have to worship together, how you bring peace to our hearts, calm our minds in that time, Lord. Pray that you would be with us as we hear the message today, that we would receive what you have for us today. We love you, Lord, amen. You know, this weekend is one of four weekends set aside to highlight an aspect of missions. We at Timberline Church are intentional about making an impact globally, nationally, and locally 
This weekend is Orphan Care Weekend, a weekend set aside to invite each of us to consider how we can stand in the gap with vulnerable children and families. Our guest this weekend is Pastor Brent Phillips from Cherish Uganda. We've had the opportunity to partner with them in so many ways. Please welcome Pastor Donnie Abbott and Pastor Brent Phillips. Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Orphan Care Weekend. Uh, Orphan Care Weekend is truly one of the best weekends that Timberline pulls off throughout the entire year. Uh, it is just such a fun weekend and this weekend is gonna be no different. I wanna introduce you to my good friend, Pastor Brent Phillips. Brent is the CEO of Cherish Uganda. And uh, Brent and I, our friendship, our relationship goes back almost 30 years to uh, Palm Desert, California, where I was a, uh, a fledgling uh, pool man starting a pool business. And uh, Brent and I were introduced through a mutual friend named Dan Kenley. Brent, what, what do you remember about that, about that time? I remember Dan introducing us and saying, I got this guy and like, let, let's start him off, you know, working with a small group. But there's something about this guy that you know, I don't know what it is, but you, you'll you see it when you meet him. And, <laughs> you know, there was something about you. Like, you're a lot more than, than, God has so much more than what you are now. And I don't even think you realize it there, Mr. Donnie Abbott. And <laughs> you grow and change, step into areas of, that required big faith. It was awesome to watch you grow. And I, yeah, it's, it, I have so many fond memories. I mean, Lee and I do of, of that time in ministry, it was great. Yeah, well, I do too. And uh, just so everyone knows, Brent, Brent is the reason why I'm in ministry. And uh, his invitation for me to join uh, in as a volunteer in the children's ministry at a church, Southwest Community Church, uh, that put me on the pathway for my life. And uh, so I'm eternally grateful to Brent and to Dan, of course, uh, for getting me into ministry. Well, Brent, you uh, you and your wife, Leah, why don't you tell us about your family? Uh, yeah, so I've been married for 29 years to my lovely wife, Leah, and we have seven kids. Um, three of them are biological kids. So we have uh, Bo, who's 27, and Amy, who's 25, and Luke, who's 22. And then uh, Bo and Luke are both married. So we have Two more daughters through marriage, and then we have two adopted kids, um, Kate and Tekle. And so, um, those all seven of those kids obviously bring us great joy, and we're thrilled um, that God has blessed us with them. Yeah, yeah. And Tekle is really kind of the the uh, pivotal connection to the Phillips and Cherish Uganda, right? Yeah, that was the start of what God was doing in our heart in regards to Africa. Leah had wanted to adopt since before we were married. And I always just kind of nodded and yeah, yeah, if God tells us to adopt, we'll do that. But not, not really wanting that. And to be honest, not asking God about it. Not la, 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 la. And 17 years later, as I was preaching on the orphan and God's heart for the orphan, God really grabbed a hold of my heart. And um, then at that point, we decided we need to adopt. We really should. And the truth is, when it came time for us to adopt, we looked for the place that was the cheapest, the place that had the least process. Like it was not a like, God, give us the country that your heart beats with our heart. Like it, I'm embarrassed to say there was not a whole lot of spiritual spirituality about it. We just knew we were supposed to do it. And that seemed the easiest path. And so Tekla is from Ethiopia. So we ended up walking through that process, adopting him from Ethiopia. And in that, in that process of adoption, that took two years, over two years, we definitely developed a heart for Africa. Mm -hmm. But once Tekla came into our family, we kind of thought, mm, I guess that kind of, you know, that African thing is kind of done. That's what that was all about, was about Tekla. And God revealed not much later after that, no, there was a much different path that he was going to put us on. And that path took you guys to Cherish Uganda, correct? Yeah, we had 
been pastoring for 25 years. That's what we had been doing and loved and felt called and figured we were going to do that the rest of our life. And um, we had sent a family from our church to Uganda as missionaries. And about six months into their time there, um, they were like, this place is really hard. And so we decided to send a few people out there just to encourage them to see their life there, to pray for them. And so two other gals and Leah hopped on a plane and off they went. And they spent about 10 days there just, in, you know, just infusing themselves into their life. And they had heard about this little orphanage, this little children's home out by the airport uh, for ki kids with HIV. And they just thought, man, we need to go see this place. And so on the way to the airport, on the way out of town, they stopped by 45 minute tour and Leah comes home and she's talking about all the things they did, but Cherish kept coming up over and over and over again. Wow. Uh, well, you know, as a church, we're looking for something to press into. Maybe this, this is the next thing that we're going to press into as a church. And so we start doing that. And one thing leads to the next. And Leah and I find ourselves standing in our front yard. It was on a Wednesday night looking at each other going, I think we're supposed to be there. Wow. He was there in January of uh, 2009. April of 2009 is when we had this moment on the front yard. June of 2009, Father's Day, we realized, sorry, this is all 2010, not 2009. Um, uh, Tecla came into our family in 2009. So 2010, now we are Father's Day. Like, I, you know what? We're going. We've made the decision. We're going. And by on November 30th of 2010, we had transitioned the leadership of the church, sold everything we owed, we and hopped on a plane and off we went. <laughs> Man, I so remember uh, journeying with you guys during that season of life. And I thought the Phillips have totally lost it. They are crazy. What are they thinking? You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pivot here, Brent, and talk about Timber Kids' involvement at Cherish. Uh, we started uh, supporting Cherish probably about seven years ago, and it was seven years ago that I led a team over to Cherish. Uh, there was about a dozen of us, and we spent like 10 days over there or so and just had a great time seeing firsthand what Cherish Uganda does. And uh, I came back from that totally inspired. And uh, every single weekend since then, our kids have been faithfully giving uh, their pennies and quarters to Cherish Uganda. And just to kind of illustrate that, let me, uh, we put together a short video clip for you. Check this out. is amazing what timber kids has done at cherish and i mean there are just there's water tanks and there's vehicles and there's equipment and there's programs that have been done like there there is an amazing amount of work that has been moved forward work for the kingdom because of timber kids involvement and that has then bled into timber lines involvement and mm -hmm. you know for cherish we partnership is really important uh, what we don't want is just to have a bunch of partners. Uh, we really want to be a part of each other's ministry. And um, and, and you you mentioned Timberline to any of our staff, and they all know exactly who Timberline is. And many of them can tell you Timberline did this. Oh, Timberline, let, let me show you where Timberline has done. And it's awesome. <laughs> relationships from that team there are still people on your teams that that team that have relationship with members of our team 
And it's just a really sweet, sweet relationship that goes well beyond giving and money. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's so good. And it's one of the reasons why you're here with us this weekend is to continue that relationship. So Brent, uh, for people who are still kind of sitting here, uh, they've been listening to us for the last several minutes and they're going, what exactly does Cherish do? You mentioned they care for HIV positive kids, but it's really so much more than that. But tell us more about it. Yeah, um, Cherish started out as a children's home, as an orphanage. Um, there was a group of people who realized there's a bunch of kids with HIV that, that the Ugandan culture has really kicked to the side and has basically wrote a death sentence over. And this small group of people realized, wait a minute, it doesn't have to be that way. And so they prayed and said, God, what do you want us to do? And they felt like God said, start a home for these kids. So that's how Cherish started. And so this, these, these HIV positive kids came into these homes. And Lee and I joined Cherish at about the three-year mark, mm -hmm. a little bit under the three-year mark. And these kids were in these homes. And so we started just jumping on in with what they were doing. And figuring out how do we love these kids and disciple these kids and how do we disciple our staff and how do we start to grow um, just solid relationships with Jesus with the, the people that are here at Cherish. And so in the process of that, we started really started asking ourselves the question, are we doing exactly what God wants us to do? And at the time when they started, I believe they fully were. But as needs change as more revelation comes you start to realize oh wait there's what about this path or this path or this path and some key things started to emerge we realized um that education was an important piece we realized that healthcare was an important piece and so we started schools um, we started primary school started a secondary school and we opened a, a hospital and our hospital operates pretty much like a urgent care right now um and so we don't have an operating room, but we have a pharmacy and a lab and um, doctors and, you know, we're able to take care of a lot of stuff in that in that space. And then we started to realize as much as this environment is good for kids, family is actually much better. Mm -hmm. You look at 60 kids or so and go, okay, <laughs> now what? And so we started the work of, we need to find families for these kids because family is the best place. Now we want to support those families and help those families and train those families and come alongside of those families and partner those families. But those families, for one, they have been given the responsibility of this child. And two, God had set up that entity, the family for the purpose of growing and discipling children. And so as we started doing our homework and research, we started to realize there are family members for these kids, these kids that might have been abandoned, um, these kids that ended up, you know, all of them have these different stories, how they ended up with us. We realized, oh, wait, there's a grandmother in this family or there's an auntie in this family. And for most of those kids, we found a family member. Now, we have adopted out five children um, to the U.S. Okay. And those were all kids we couldn't find any family for at all. Zero. And then we have a handful of kids that are in foster care. So these are also kids we either couldn't find a family or the one or two family members we found, it was it just wasn't safe and it wasn't best. So we do have a handful of kids also in foster care. But rather than live on site in an institution, they live in a family. Yeah. And so we now um, kind of three main streams of our ministry. Uh, first one is social work. And that's kind of the link. That's the. That's the part of our of our ministry that understands what's happening in these families. What do these families need? How do we come alongside of these families? How do we partner with them? And so that social work piece is really important. And they're they're off on the field. They're they're in the village. They're meeting with families and they're going to doctor appointments and they're walking alongside. And, and partnership is really important to us. Uh, we don't do anything for free. Uh, we we want to empower people, not um, you take away their responsibility and us take care of it for them. Right. We found that that is really, really healing. Um, there's one particular guy we're working with right now, and he um, has a significant medical condition. And our social work team did, has determined that he can pay like 10% of all of the expenses. And then we don't 
we don't do anything until he pays his 10%. So just this last week, he had a doctor appointment and some tests and it was around cancer and chemo. And it wasn't much. It was going to be, let's see, maybe around $75. So his part was seven bucks. Mm. Uh, and sure enough, he brought his $7 to the office on the way to give us his $7 and <laughs> off we went. And then we cover the rest. And so that social work piece is really vital. And then the tools that the social uses um, one of them is education and the one of them is is healthcare and so um, we'll talk a, in a bit later just kind of more specifics about our schools and, and our hospitals but yeah. those, those are key places where ministry takes place because that's the felt need they come through the gate with the felt need i need an education i'm hurting i need some medical care right. and then we address the felt need we then start digging into the spiritual need All right Wow, Brent, you guys do amazing work over at Cherish. And I know uh, you had mentioned a, an important aspect of, of what Cherish does is through relationships and discipleship. Tell us a little bit more about how does that actually play out at Cherish? Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of organizations doing a lot of good things, and we don't want to be one of them. <laughs> we don't want to be just another organization doing a lot of good things and missing what we feel is the most important piece. Um, our four values are the one we lead with is to connect with Christ. Like that is the main reason we're there. So we're constantly reminding our people of that. And um, we're, we're teaching our people how to dig into the word. A big part of their development as an employee is spiritual development. And um, we're currently in a season right now where where Leah's teaching them via video how to dig into the word on their own. And, you know, every staff member has a Bible. Every staff member has a journal. There's a 30-minute segment during the day where they sit down and they dig into scripture on their own. And that is such a foreign concept in that culture. Mm -hmm. um, you typically only get the word when the preacher gives it to you. And you might open your Bible at church, but most are not opening their Bible at home. Most are not reading the Bible on their own. And so many of our staff are doing that for the very first time when, as they become an employee of Cherish. Wow. And then we do the same with our, with, our, with our students. You know, a big part of their school day is that. You know, they have their teachers and that's still worked into their curriculum. But with our kids who live on site, uh, they're, they're basically, we're terming them as a life coach. And those adults pour into the lives of those kids. And that spiritual component is really, really important. You know, we're going through um, the book of Mark right now at, with, with our whole team, including our older kids. And just, just word by word, you know, just taking chunks and just working through the book of Mark. And, you know, when you tell them that we're going to do what? We're going to go through the whole book. How long is that going to take? A long time. And it's going to be great. So, as we're digging into that, it's been amazing to watch um, the stuff just bubble up and you, to watch those light bulbs go on. In fact, I'm, after this, I'm about to shoot a video for our training for our teacher, our teaching this coming uh, week. And um, I just happened to look at these notes and I think this gives a real clear picture of what, what we do. You know, Jesus here in, in uh, Mark chapter three, he is uh, calling the disciples. And he says um, in verse number 14, and he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. And then it lists these 12. And we believe that God appointed all of us as to be his disciples. And therefore he's appointed all of us to be with him. He's appointed all of us preached the gospel and appointed all of us with the authority to cast out demons. And so as we're walking through this with our people, teaching them that you also have the authority to preach, that God's given you that. And you might not stand up behind a pulpit with a Bible, but you have words of truth to share with the world. And it's your responsibility. And you, you have to understand that it's your job to share the power of the resurrection with the world around you. And God wants you to be with him. Like he wants a relationship. He doesn't just want, you know, you know to pray a prayer and you, someday you'll see me in heaven. No, that he deeply desires a relationship. And, you know, in our Ugandan culture, it is heavy religion, light relationship. And 
you know, that that's a story that we have been fighting to change for years. And it just, it is a slow, slow, slow little click of the dial, but it's after 10 years of this, you see that starting to happen amongst the people. Mm-hmm. And even around the authority to cast out demons, like we've all been given that authority. Like the scripture says that, that we were created just a little bit below God mm-hmm. in the book of Psalms, which puts us pretty high on the org chart, which means we have, we have power over the, the evil, the evil one. And his, and we need to exercise that authority and live as ones who have the authority and power of the resurrection. And so that's the kind of stuff we are constantly helping our one and our staff and our children to understand is mm-hmm. a relationship with Jesus is not you pray the prayer and then you come and do all the activities at church. That that is not what he's calling you to. It is something much deeper and much more important than that. And it is such a joy for Lee and I to watch the uh, that develop within our people and then them then that rolls into their families and you know just in a meeting yesterday them sharing about we'd done a teaching on the sabbath and from mark chapter two a couple weeks ago and our executive team was sharing like i've got to talk this this video i'm going to send this video to my husband because we're on different pages about this and i don't think he has a deep understanding of this and and another (laughs) person like yeah i'm going to send this this one to my people at my church because they're not getting this and understanding this and so it's just just watching the revelation of scripture come alive is really why we exist yeah we have a hospital and yes we have schools and yes we have social workers and yes we have 20 acres and we have 60 employees and like all of that stuff but all that stuff exists because we want the gospel of jesus to go out into the lives of people uh, of course, we're uh, hopefully we're coming to the tail end of this COVID pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's been a year this month uh, that it's really impacted our entire world. And, and with it impacting the world, we know that it impacted uh, nonprofits around the world. So, Brent, how has COVID directly impacted Cherish Uganda? Yeah, it's, it's had a significant impact. Um, first of all, and Uganda closed all the schools a year ago. And um, well, those kids just went to the school down the street, right? Yeah, no, our, we, had, we had our kids. Yeah, j- just like that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so our kids, our kids, they went back home and they went back home to nothing. Uh, wow. You know, remote learning, you know, a lot of our kids don't have power in their homes, let alone internet or a device, you know, you know, here in our, in our school district, probably similar to yours, you know, like our kids have these brand new laptops that the school gives them. There you go. Here's a device. So you can do your school. And, you know, obviously none of that happens in Uganda. And so basically Uganda just lost a whole year of school. Wow. And what that did for us was it was so difficult to close our school and to let go about 40 teachers. I mean, that was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. That's one of those board meetings where you're like, oh boy, this is a really hard call and this is going to be rough. And so we made that call. Um, and then what we did with our team is put our head above the water and go, okay, now let's take a look at this model that we have. And has it worked or has it not? And what we realized with our education system is we were having kids that were going through our programs and then we looked at okay let's look at the end result what what is the, what is the end result and as far as jobs they were having the kind of jobs you wouldn't want your own kids to have you know they were driving motorcycle taxis and they were fixing bicycles and you know selling selling used shoes and i'm not saying those jobs are terrible but the problem with those jobs is those jobs will not pull you out of poverty mm-hmm. so we want something more than and so we started asking God, what do you want us to do? Do we keep doing the same old thing and expect different results? <laughs> That's not going to work. We have to do something different. And so we have made a significant pivot. And now we're really focusing on skilling kids up in emergent markets. Like what does Uganda need and what does Uganda want? And there's not enough people for it. What's that? I just saw a statistic last week. But in 2019, 700,000 students graduated from secondary education or from high school. Okay. 
700,000 graduates, 75,000 got a job. That's it. Oh, wow. And in the process of praying through this and talking to different people, we realized that uh, computer science is the direction we need to go and particularly coding. So we have um, now, we have 20 computers been donated by Dell that are now sitting in our computer lab. Um, in April, we will start our first computer science training course. Um, once those kids graduate, we, they will then apply for our Impact Works Center, which is a coding center that we're going to have on site. And we have now a relationship with a, it's actually a ministry that goes and gets these offshore coding jobs. And they're the ones who bring those to our coding center. And kids are going to be able to make the kind of living that'll pull them out of poverty for generations. And so we're super excited about that. We're still going to be teaching foundational education with our primary age students. Um, the, the, the idea around the kind of traditional Ugandan curriculum, we're pushing that aside and developing this curriculum with our primary age students that will teach them reading and writing and math, but also critical thinking skills and problem solving and like how to be, how to communicate and a lot of those basic skills that aren't being taught mm -hmm. in your school, all built on the foundation of discipleship. So we are really excited about that. And then the second pivot that we've made is our hospital is babies. We haven't had any babies born in our hospital, mostly because of me. I've been scared. Like what happens if we don't have an operating room? We can't solve this. Like what? No, we're not going to have any babies yeah. until we can build an operating room, build a maternity center and do it right. right. Well, you know, the truth is that's, that's a five, $600,000 undertaking. And so the government came to us and said, you know what? This clinic needs to be having babies. Why are you not having babies? And they're like, well, because we don't have this and this. And they said, you know what? You're one of the best clinics in the in the, our district. If you don't start having babies, we will not renew your license. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so um, our goal is by December first, we'll, this year, we'll start having babies at our clinic, which is super exciting because you have a mom who comes in. We're able to walk all the prenatal time with her. We're able to walk through the birth process. All of that postnatal, like we're able to walk the whole process with her and build a relationship with her and that family. So it's really going to be an awesome tool for us to invest in the lives of these moms. So God's even as COVID it came, you know, and the truth is we we lost some of those kind of one-off bigger donations through the year. All of our regular givers, we only lost three, and then one of them has come back. So in the end, we only lost two of our regular givers, which is amazing. They, we lost for the ones where someone will close a big deal and they'll be like, oh, I just closed the big deal. Only write a check for 5,000 or write a check for 12,000 to cherish. I think more people are like, I got to hold on to that money. So we lost some of those one-off gifts, um, but God continues to be faithful and continues to say, you know what? Keep moving. You know what? Is And our vision always, out pat, always outpaces our budget. So God, you know, we just kind of keep going as God goes. And the thing is, is he just keeps supplying what we need yeah that is so good well brent how can people uh who are watching this how can they get involved with what is going on at cherish yeah i mean there's there's real simple ways of you know we have a table out you know in the lobby at, physically at the church mm -hmm. uh, and then we uh, also have an opportunity for people to hop on our website and you go to cherishuganda.org and you can just read about anything you want to read about. There's videos on that, uh, a bunch of stuff. So you can kind of check that out. You can sign up for our newsletter. That way you can get regular information in your inbox. Okay. Um, if you want to give, there's a place to give. Um, if you want to go on a trip, and Timberline is taking a trip this summer. Yep. Like there's, there's lots of opportunities to be a part from very low level. I just want to hear more about it to I'm in. Let me give some money. Let me hear about how I can pray for this this ministry that God's got going here. So lots of Oh, so good. I hope that you all have kind of captured Brent's passion for what is happening, for what God is doing over at Cherish. And we would love for you to be a part of it. Like Brent said, you visit, visit us out in the, the mall. We'll have a table out there. Or you can, uh, like Brent said, go to cherishuganda.org. And make sure that we don't sign off without just me saying thank you uh, to Timberline 
it's it's really been an amazing, encouraging um, relationship for us and partnership for us. Uh, the work that you do at Timberline it, it reaches so many people in so many places, and we're just a small little part of that. But we it, it's small for you as far as the scope of your ministry, but to us, that small part is massive. Um, you're one of the handful of individuals or organizations, I think there's eight of them that have given over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. To cherish. And Timberline is one of those, which is super, super cool. And the amazing thing, it wasn't like somebody just wrote a check. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Like it's been kids putting money in an offering bucket yeah. for years and years and years. And yeah. just keeps adding up and adding up, and adding up. And now this impact that has been made is pretty, pretty cool. And so, I also want to say, I, I mean, this is just my own little plug here to say thanks. Brent actually put my name on a building over <laughs> at Cherish. <laughs> so here's a here's a picture of that building. So, hey, uh, Trump had his Trump Towers, but I have my outhouse at Cherish, Uganda. For sure. Not everybody yeah. can say that. Uh, I only know one person who can say that, and it's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brent, you have a, a cherished thank you video, right? Yeah. Why don't you guys go ahead and play that. My name is Simba. Yes, my name is Joel. Thank you, Timberline team, for supporting Cherry. My name is Pascal. My name is Flores. My name is Sewa. My name is Gordon. My name is Nicholas. Uh, thank you, Timberland Church, for supporting Cherish Uganda. Hello, my name is Joy Rio. Thank you, Timberland Church, for supporting Cherish Uganda. Hi, I'm Juanita. Thanks, Timberland Church, for supporting Cherish. My name is Justin. Thank you, Timberline team, for supporting us. My name is Barbara Ratema. Thank you, Timberline Church, for supporting Cherish. Hi, I'm Doreen. Thank you, Timberline Church, for supporting Cherish. We are so grateful. God bless you. My name is James. I am Stonia. I'm Alex. I'm Scotia. Thank you, Thank you Timberline, Timberline, for supporting Cherish. We love Uganda. you. We love you. All right, everyone. Well, uh, I hope that you've been inspired uh, by what Brent shared with us this weekend. Brent, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we will definitely continue our relationship together, uh, hopefully for many more years to come. God bless everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor Donnie and Pastor Brent. It's so exciting to hear how Cherish Yukon is making an impact, caring for vulnerable children and seeking ways to keep families together through their family preservation model. You, Timberline Church, have been part of that. Thank you. I wanna share some intentional ways that you can be involved. You can give financially to orphan care by texting family to the number on the screen, because you give, we're able to support organizations like Cherish Uganda with project funds that they need. And did you know that we have over 30 foster adoptive and kinship families here at Timberline? Because you give, we're able to send them gift cards for dinner, ice cream, and just special care for their families. During our quarantine season, we were able to send them monthly gifts to let them know that we care about what they're going through. You can also, put these blue pinwheels in your yard as we partner with Realities for Children to help bring attention that April is National Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. You can pick up one of these pinwheels at Timberland Church at the patio entrance doors while supplies last. Because you give through Timberland Church, you're making an impact globally, nationally, and locally. You can text GIVE to the number on the screen to give your regular tithe and offering. Also, if you've recently decided to follow Jesus, we're excited for you. And I'd like to invite you to text YES to the number on the screen. We would like to get some tools in your hands. 
In closing, my prayer for all of us is, may God open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds for opportunities that each of us can stand in the gap with vulnerable children and families in our community and around the world. God bless you and have a great week. Father, we're on our knees with every heart we bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come Father, we're crying.